Thank you very much for joining us for our CAO virtual open day today. And um, so we're going to be chatting to students and lecturers about all of the courses at NCI. And um, so first up is our BA Honours degree in Early Childhood Education and Care. Hi everyone, my name is Anna Barr and I'm a lecturer on the BA Honours in Early Childhood Education and Care here at uh, National College of Ireland. So currently I'm a lecturer in a few different modules. I lecture with the year one students on music, movement, art and drama. I am a lecturer for a year two module on play and creativity in early childhood. And I'm a lecturer in year three for a module on inquiry learning, design and evaluation of curriculum. And I'm also the lead placement for the year two and the year three um, place, supervised placement practice. So um, I'm going to have a chat with a couple of our students today. We've got Joanne and Jessica, and um, I'm going to introduce them now. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm in year three of the Early Childhood Education and Care um, programme. Hi, I'm Joanne and I'm also in year three of the BA Honours in Early Childhood Education and Care. Hi, that's great to hear from you, Jessica and Joanne. So I'm going to start by asking um, a couple of questions. I'm going to ask you both the same things and just to build that sense of what it's like being a student on the uh, Early Childhood Education and Care degree here at NCI. So my first question to you is, is this the course that you expected it to be when you applied? Or is it, um, if not, has your perspective changed? I'm going to check in with you, Jessica. Um, for me, it actually changed, Anna, because I was thinking it was going to be a little bit more about Terry. But what I realised is actually a lot to do with practice as well. So when you're in placement, you learn so much from just being in the room with the children. And I didn't realise how creative it was going to be as well, because I am I love art and I love the creative arts as well. So it was lovely to be able to apply this to your actual job, your everyday job in, in placement um, throughout the year. So it was definitely different. And we learned a lot more about child development and psychology. I didn't expect psychology to be included in this. So that was something I've always been interested in. And I didn't think they would have this in the in this um, module. But from year two, we had dispositions on children's behaviours and there was a lot about ch um, child psychology involved in this so that was definitely something I didn't expect from the course and I loved that part of it as well it was very interesting. Oh that's great to hear Jessica it's great to hear this, that that you found the creative part and the theory part or the child development part um, yeah. yeah fantastic and um, I'm going to check in then with uh, Joanne and see Joanne is, is the course what you expected to be when you applied? I definitely agree with Jessica I but mine was the opposite I thought it was kind of going to be more based on like practical which is brilliant but I didn't realize there's going to be so much theory behind it and that's what I'm finding most interesting as well and um, I love hearing all the different theorists and you know that they really go in depth to and make you question why children act the way they do and it's bringing in you know the whole concept of how important an environment a child's environment is so I love as although I love like you Jessica I love the arts and crafts and things but I actually love the theory behind it and um, I love the psychology I think the psychology is so interesting and then you're using that and you're you're putting it into practice especially in your workplaces and stuff so it's making you understand things a lot more across the board down children with additional needs um, yeah, so I, I, it definitely is, isn't what I thought it would be in a good way. I love the theory behind it all. That is brilliant, Joanne. That's great to hear. And it's great to hear you've got similar, similar but different viewpoints on it. Um, but interesting that you're talking about the theory and um, well, I'm going to go on and ask you, Jessica, then what is the most interesting part about your study? So you mentioned the creativity and some of those theories that you're learning. Is there anything in particular that really jumped, has jumped out at you over the last year? Yeah, so the one thing that's really actually jumped out for me is realising that you're an actual 
um, teacher. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but when I started a course, it was kind of a job. Um, people would say it's a glorified babysitter. You're just caring for babies. And, you know, there was a lot of kind of stigma around going into being to study in early childhood education. But I think from doing the degree, you realise that you're actually a professional and you realise the importance of your job as well and how you're actually design in your own curriculum and now at the position I'm in now from my job that I got through studying as well and um, I have my own classroom now so I have 18 children in my class and I see the difference I'm making every day to them recreating the classroom and you realize that it's it's not just you know it's actually a really interesting job and you're you're, you're treated with respect then as well once you kind of have your own room in your class and you can design everything especially like I said I love the creative part of it as well so I can design whichever kind of activities we're doing that weekend we can like Brilliant. have a day where we're doing work or a day where we're just playing in the mud or you know everything counts so it's really that for me was the biggest thing that jumped out and we we did some modules around that as well and um, kind of building up your professional development in year two so I found that really helpful for me. Do you feel, Jessica, it supported? You were supported through those modules. Has it helped you with that professional practice side of it things? It has, yeah, yeah, it definitely has. Because I think when I went into it, I didn't have the confidence going into it. I was very kind of holding back and thinking, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to have my own classroom. I'd never be able to manage the classroom. But then from having the modules and the tutors to support you, they kind of gave me that confidence. You go in, then the next day, and you're thinking, OK, I'm able for this. You know, I've got all of these skills and all of this knowledge from college. So that's that was the biggest push for me, definitely. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing, Jessica. There, there are some great points. I'm going to move over and ask Joanne then the same question. You know, you've mentioned a, a lot of what interested you in this module, but is there anything in particular? I know you mentioned um, working with children with additional needs and things like that. Is there anything that's been most interesting while you've been doing your studies here? Yeah, I think as the years are going on, we're in year three now, you definitely grow in confidence of what, you know, how how you how you work your room, your practice, your professional practice, and you definitely gain confidence and support on that side. And, um, you know, you realise the importance of an inclusive practice. Diversity Week, we covered a lot of diversity and inclusion in early years. And um, so you really kind of, this degree makes you grow in knowledge and confidence to build you know, early years is such an important part of a child's life. They, you know, people think ECC scheme is only three hours a day, but it's a really important three hours a day for a child, you know, so it's up to us having the knowledge and the, the degree definitely gives you that to provide a, a service and a practice that meets every child's needs. And as well as that, I think, you know, working as part of a team and building, you know, I work with, with different girls and I'm relaying the knowledge that I'm learning in my degree as well. Brilliant. But it's very much, you know, you're learning and you're putting into practice straight away, you know, in your work placements and everything. And it's really interesting. And I think when you're listening to your lectures, things make sense because you're you're doing them firsthand. So, it's so it makes it so interesting. It's not like school where you know, you're sitting in biology class and, you know, you're kind of going, oh, yeah, that's a great experiment. And but you're kind of imagining this. Yeah. more so where when you're when you're working with children and you're and you're or you're taking ideas or you're taking chances on doing different things because you're learning it in college in this degree so that for me is really interesting you know you learn and then you put it into practice so and it makes it easier when you're writing up your 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 different uh you know modules and stuff like that it definitely makes it easier so that sounds fantastic joanne the way you've described it that there's these really nice connections between the theory or the content and putting it into practice um, did, did you feel supported as you've been going through the stuff to be able to put it into practice, but also, you know, complete your assignments? Has it helped you with getting your assignments done? Absolutely. I really feel that your the support is really there. And as well, you know, there's a lot of class discussions, so you get ideas from everyone else in the class. So that again, and obviously lectures, even little, little snippets of things like we had um, a really nice idea to, for um, story time. We wrap the, the stories up in wrapping paper. So now each day that one child gets to open up a present, they called it that themselves. So like even down to little ideas in college and um, everyone, it's, there's a lot of discussion. It's a course where there's a, it's a lot of talk and a lot of discussion, a lot of support from not only lecturers, but also your classmates. And um, so that's really, yeah, definitely supported, I feel, yeah. That's fantastic, Joanne, thank you. 
I'm going to move back and ask Jessica. I have um, another question here, Jessica. Um, where do you hope your quali qualification will lead? And I know before you start uh, replying to it, I know you mentioned that you're now working in a setting while you're finishing your, your studies here at NCI. So you're obviously on the pathway to something. Do you have any um, aims, you know, where this, this qualification will take you? Yeah, so and at the moment I'm working in a preschool room and I'm enjoying that for now because it's it's definitely relating to what I'm studying in the degree. So I think the best thing about this degree um, in the early childhood education is that you can actually go in so many different places. So I think when I finish the degree, I'll probably do a postgraduate in maybe social care or play therapy. Mm -hmm. Play therapy is becoming a really popular one as well. And I think it, it kind of relates to the psychology part of it as well, which I find very interesting. But then there's also creative arts that you could do. There's so much that you can actually do with it. So at the moment, I have ideas in mind. So I'm just seeing where it's taken me and I might end up finding a new module that I'm interested in because at the moment we're doing a module in digital play and learning about technology in the classroom. And I'm finding that very interesting now. So I constantly keep finding new things that I like about it. So I, I think by when I'm finished, <laughs> I'll know what I want to do by, the, by year four. So at the moment, it's there's a few options out there for me, definitely. <laughs> Fantastic. That's great. Thanks, Jessica. I was going to ask you, Jessica, if um, has has your starting point changed? So when you signed up for this course or even before you signed up for it, did you have a different pathway in mind or, uh, you know, has this one evolved as you've gone along? Yeah, definitely. Um, and so when I was in sixth year, I never actually knew what I wanted to do. I didn't fill my CAO out because I was actually completely lost. Um, so I ended up just going in to work in a couple of jobs and then I looked into doing a level five and I worked, studied part time level five childcare um, in Clasha Dulic. And then I went on from there to a level six in the Liberties. And then yeah. all throughout that time, I was doing placement, I was working, babysitting, childminding. And then I went into NCI now and um, I got the route, the level six route into year two in NCI. So um, it's definitely taken me on a completely different path. I didn't know it was even there, but I, I'm loving every second of it. So I'm delighted that I have discovered it. And I came in as a mature student as well. So it was nice to have the life experience, the, the experience after the leave insert. So yeah, I've definitely taken a different path altogether now. So I'm really happy with it. That's great. Yeah, thanks, Jessica, for sharing that. I'm going to um, move over, Joanne, and ask you that final question there. Like, where do you hope your qualification will uh, lead you? Where is it going to take you? And is it different from where you started? Yeah, I kind of always um, was interested in. I actually did social care when I finished school. Um, so I've already, always been interested in additional needs and looking kind of the psychology side of things. So I really think this um, degree gives you the foundation to be able to go down loads of different avenues that what you want to do. So I'm the same, I'm kind of play therapy, child psychology, I'm looking up different places, Galway have a really good course and um, masters and postgrad and stuff. So um, yeah, definitely I, I'd like to go down that route after. Fantastic. So. Thanks, Joanne. There are some, some great points for the future. And Jessica, you've got some great ideas as well. Um, so wishing you all the best as you continue on with your studies and all the best for the future. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. So next up, we're going to find out about our business and accounting and finance course. So I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Dave, uh, who's going to be chatting to some of the students. Thank you very much, Karen. Uh, Dave Cormack is my name. I work as a lecturer in the School of Business in the National College of Ireland. I'm delighted to have uh, Christy Dodita and Killian Cosgrave here with me today. So first off, uh, if we could get some introductions from you guys. Christy, do you want to tell us about yourself? Hey, my name's Christy. I'm in the BA. Honours in finance and uh, accounting and finance, sorry, uh, year three at the moment, my final year. Great stuff, Christy and Killian. Uh, my name is Killian. <clears throat> I'm currently in second year uh, studying BA honours in business. Great stuff, guys. And listen, thanks very much for coming along today. And it's absolutely great to have you. Uh, if I could go back to you, Killian, Christy, can, can you give me some thoughts on the BA honours in accounting and finance? Yeah, it's a brilliant course. Uh, 
obviously I did the higher surf first and I got in a bit later on than everyone. So basically the people that are doing it now are probably the year that started after me. But I feel like it's been great. Obviously with the whole COVID it's been different, but everyone else is going to have different next year when they're in. But it's been great. I really enjoyed it. Like the events of like opportunities that we got from like careers as well graduate programs that we've been like all the stuff that we've been getting has been brilliant and I've really enjoyed it the numbers I've really got like used to excel which has been something I was really scared about but I really got used to we've done a lot of work with excel and even like word and stuff so I've been I've, I've really enjoyed it. I said that a lot but it's been great okay very good Chris and just staying with you there like you, you are a numbers man I know that but uh tell me about what particular subjects really appeal to you on on the course yeah, so the ones I really loved the most have been taxation. So it's a weird one. It's not really accounting, but it is a lot to do with numbers. Uh, it's just a mathematic part and just all the calculations. I really enjoy doing that. Stuff like even financial accounting and management accounting itself, really the ones that are focused on numbers. Like stuff I struggle in is more the theory side, like law and regulation. But it's actually quite interesting as well, which I found as well, like all the different like stories and different like cases. And obviously different people find it different, but for myself, I really enjoyed the number side, like management account and financial account and even corporate finance, which we did either in second year. Really good. OK, and uh, Killian, I'll come to you just a minute. I want to finish off with, with, with Christian a couple of points. I will be back to you then, Christy. Uh, you know, you mentioned financial accounting, management accounting, corporate finance. To somebody non-accounting, they all sound like the same thing to me. Mm -hmm. Are they Are they very different? So a lot of the theory is the same, like you're doing the exact kind of the same steps. Like remember last year when we were doing it, there's similar questions but everyone kind of has its own like separate like there's always a little bit of theory as well and that theory is what goes into it but really the it's it's a lot of the same work but in different subjects it's hard to explain it without like showing examples but uh, it's it is different but it's also kind of similar that's the answer i give <laughs> okay christy great so thanks for that now listen i'll be back to you in a bit killian uh you're doing the ba honors in business is that correct yeah, that's correct. Tell me a little bit about that. So I was the same as Christy, actually. I came through the higher cert. So I had a bit of an idea on what's going to happen. But it's funny, though, with business, it's uh, it's not what you expect at all. Because when you think of business, you think of like accounting and you think of marketing and economics and stuff. But I feel like in NCI, they really put an expression on um, like entrepreneurship and business ideas. So it's something that they really focus on because we would cover it actually basically all modules. So uh, it's complete. Well, it's completely different in a good way to what I was expecting. But um, yeah, it's a very broad degree, so I'd definitely recommend it if you weren't sure what exactly you wanted to go into. OK, uh, very good, Killian. And uh, just you mentioned their entrepreneurship. Is, is there actually a module on entrepreneurship in your course? Yeah, yeah. so in first and second year. Well, sorry, in the higher search we did, and then we also did it in, we're doing at the moment. So one of the uh, CAs that we have to do at the moment is come up with our own business idea. And then we're going to have to pre uh, present it at the end of this semester, actually. So uh, it's actually looking forward to it. Should be a bit of fun. OK, that, that sounds very, very practical. Is, is that the case? Yeah, a lot, uh, a lot of the uh, modules would be practical. Because there's, um, they'd mainly be CAs, and then they're mostly group CAs this year, especially. So a lot of, um, you do do a lot of uh, practical stuff. Okay, great. So, Kitty, listen, thanks very much. Right now, both yourself and uh, Christy mentioned the higher cert that you came the higher cert route. Can you just explain to people what that means in real terms? Yes. Yeah, so um, when I did the leave. Uh, like, to be honest, I wasn't great in school, not going to die. <laughs> so um, I came through the higher cert way. And then it, you, you basically, it's basically the exact same thing as what you do in first year, except it's two years. So um, when you when you complete it, you, you go into second year of the degree that you want to choose. So you get to choose between HR, accounting and finance, business. So, um, but it is basically the same stuff as you do in first year, except you do it over two years. Okay. And tell me, uh, Killian, would you recommend that route? Would you say it's a, it, it's a good route into second year? Yeah, especially if you're not sure what you uh, want to do, or if you say if you didn't do great in your leaving search, it's a 
basically it's a great way of staying instead of repeating the leave insert you can go in through the higher cert way i definitely if you're especially if you're not sure i'd definitely recommend it okay can i go back to you christy again now and just uh, you also came from the higher cert is that yeah. uh, would you have similar thoughts to killian or would you like to add to that yeah very similar i think uh obviously it's business but i think it's it's a lot like it's very broad like you do marketing you do accounting hrm and even business obviously itself so you're doing a lot of options if so if you're not actually sure what you want to do which is one something i came into college i was, wasn't i wanted accounting but i wasn't actually 100 percent sure if i wanted it it made my decision easier once i did all those other subjects as well and i think it's it's, it's brilliant even like you're like people in it like all the stuff you do it's great i really enjoyed it i wouldn't change it now going back very good, very good. And that brings me on then, Christy. OK, as you say, you you always wanted accounting, weren't 100 percent sure, uh, did a higher certain business first and then moved on to into the uh, BA honours in accounting and finance. What direction is that taking you now? Where do you see yourself going with with the degree when you graduate? Yes. Yeah, so, of course, like I'm in account and finance, but it's still a lot like you can go in different uh, routes. Uh, obviously, I said like taxation earlier. Uh, that's one of the possible routes you could go even like as an actual financial accountant but you still need to do a couple of exams once you finish it's like your, it's called your bodies and it's like your acca levels which is uh but you can get that through working with one of the obviously when the firm accounting firms they can help you go through that which is i'm excited to do that as well obviously still a bit of work to do after so you're not fully finished your studies once you finish college but still a bit work like uh, but you're almost on the way you're on the pathway sorry to say. okay and sorry now, Chris, you just go back to that ACCA. Uh, you yeah. sound very knowledgeable on that. Did you pick up that knowledge through NCI or is that, did you do your own research? Yeah, I actually had no idea anything really about it. I know I have my mom that did it, but I didn't know like what came with it. Like you do a lot of exams in NCI that gives you exemptions for the future. So for example, I did in, when we were even in higher, so we did accounting and finance one and uh, we did law corporate was corporate law and they gave you exemptions if you did 50 percent and over which is a not it's a it's like a reasonable result like you can get that it's achievable and you obviously in accounting and you year by year you pick up more and more and you go into to do your bodies or your ecca or charter depending on which one it is with a lot of exemptions which only need you only need a couple of exams whereas someone who's starting from the beginning has a lot more to do okay very good um really interesting uh christy now just again just bring your mind back to when you were in Leaving Cert and what your thoughts were about college. Is it what you thought it would be or is it different or how, how has your experience been? So it's complete. I think it's completely different. Like obviously in school, it's a bit more like they, they're on top of you, the teachers. It's all about you need to do this. You need there's a lot of rules, whereas in college, I feel it's more your own responsibility to do everything and you're kind of pushing yourself. So no lecture is going to force you to come in. Obviously, they want you to come in. But you, uh, it's your own choice, and I feel like that responsibility is good for going in the future as well when you're working. It's about getting up every morning. It's about wanting to do, wanting to succeed, and I feel like that responsibility is giving you a bit more. Like it's on your, you're growing up like that. I feel like in school you're always like had that teacher telling you, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that. But now you're taking it all yourself, really. Okay, great stuff. Uh, thanks uh, again, Chrissy. I'll be back to you in a minute. Coming mm -hmm. back to you again, Killian. Um, you you've gone the broad business route. Uh, from after your higher cert, where do you see that taking you career-wise or future studies-wise? Um, I think, to be honest, like once I finish the three years, I think I might go into a, might try and get into a grad program or something and see what happens from there. Because I think the fact that I chose business, it's such a broad degree. So I think, I think one of the main reasons I chose, because I didn't want to, I know it's not limiting yourself, but it's almost like keeping options open. So I decided, I th so I hope to get into a grad program and then see what happens from there. OK, and when you say grad program, again, that's I, I, I don't know. How does that work or how, how does that, how do you get there? And has NCI been helpful in that area? Yeah, so actually I managed to do an internship there during the summer and NCI helped me get it. So um, I, it was through Vodafone actually, so NCI helped me get in contact with someone uh, through Vodafone. And then if you, they offer you uh, a grad program, actually, at the end of your studies, if you, main, if you manage to maintain your grades 
and uh, then you have to you have to do another interview selection process but uh, usually you have to do three but I think because you managed to do the internship that NCI managed to get me I managed to get a uh, you get through the past the first stage of interviews so it'd be interesting to see what happens so I'm looking forward to that. It sounds, sounds really interesting and um, certainly that that concept of getting into the first past the first hurdle that's really like you're past quite a significant hurdle when you're there. Um, I, I asked uh, Chris Thierry to go back to uh, sixth year in secondary school and get his head around wh where he was and what college was going to be and then what it actually was. What are your experiences there Killian? Well, I think college is 10 times better than you think. I went in thinking it was a uh, I was actually look, I was looking forward to it and knew it was going to be good but I think the fact that it's so different and all your responsibility is on you it's a great like going in before coming into the college I didn't know anyone that was actually coming here but I think that's a good way of going in because it makes it almost like you have to you have to make friends then you can't have your select few so I think that's a I definitely recommend it's almost better going in not knowing anyone because I'd say since joining in 2019 I'd say God base you get like a group of really close friends after a while because you start doing CAs with them and you spend a lot of time with them so there's um I definitely make I definitely have made a lot of new friends since joining so I think it's much better than you expect very good uh great so we'll be back to you in a little minute again Killian uh Christy let's let's come back and I know we've talked about uh, you know your college experience, pre-college experience. T tell me, what was what would you say was the most interesting thing that you've you've encountered in in college? Um, interesting. Well, I think there's a lot of things that happened that's been interesting. Obviously, we've learned. I think it's much more like you've digital focused and stuff. Like obviously, you need to learn more about Word and all the, all the, all the really ones and presentations and how to do that. Obviously, we've done face to face presentations before and stuff and it's you're thinking it's nervous and stuff. You're very nervous, but you go in, you do it and it's actually fine. It's a good life experience as well. Obviously, you met all these new people, as Killian said, I totally agree with what he said when it comes to like coming in, not knowing anyone because you make new friends. Everyone's kind of in the same position. You come into a new college and I uh, totally agree with Killian. He said that it's better to come in, not really knowing anyone and then making new friends. But I think favorite part has been kind of like all the moments that we've done like the class like all in classes and all like even when we were with you Dave we did all those entrepreneurship we did all these uh, innovative ideas and I feel like working as a class it was interesting to see all the people's ideas and perspectives. Yeah um, very, very interesting and just before before we wrap it just want to say uh, Christy again just what was the most challenging thing that you've encountered since you, you went to college in college I mean? I had uh, this is actually quite something you won't really do in school. It's referencing. It took me a while to get the uh, with references. I didn't really understand how to do it, and obviously I was really scared to not like plagiarism and stuff like that. Obviously you do learn it with time and you get used to it. Now you do it like without thinking. But at the start, it took me a while to kind of wrap my head around it. Very good. Fair play. Thanks very much, Chrissy. Kitty, yeah. just going back to yourself, uh, what would you say is the most exciting thing for you since you you went to college? Exciting would probably be. I'd say it's probably going into almost the unknown because like you do, it is completely different it's almost an adventure the like if you do three years I'd say that my three years have been completely different each year is because you go from say first year you go in it's a huge change but then each each year you go through is a massive um it's a learning curve so I'd say that's been one of the best experiences so far and uh, as Christy said earlier I've wouldn't change it for anything. Very good. That's really good to know. Uh, now, while, while I might as well ask you the other question as well. What was the greatest challenge that you found since going to college? Um, I'd say probably getting all your CAs or your exams in on time because like they're all, I know they like the lectures don't probably don't realize, but they all come in at like they all come around the same dates. So there's a lot of pressure put on but I think uh, if you if you're able to handle it if you get used to everything and get your uh, work done and stay on top of it it's actually not too bad at all but I know the first the first year you think you can breeze around because people say it but definitely as long as you keep your work done you're doing well. 
Okay, well, here, that's great advice, Killian. And uh, you know they do all come together, but you you're both living proof of the fact that you you get them done, you get them in, and you're both uh, you're in your final year, is that right, Christy? And you're in second year, is that right, Killian? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're both living proof the fact that you can progress. So, I think that's a great note to wrap up on, Kitty, and a piece of advice to keep ahead of the the, the work and uh, to to work work through your timetable. Listen, lads, thanks very much for that. It was really good. Um, I, uh, I I learned a lot, and we've been quite a while talking. So, fair play, and thanks for 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 your thoughts. Thanks so much um, for joining us today for our open day. So I'm going to pass you on to Fanta Sheridan and she's going to tell you a little about our courses in the School of Computing and you can chat to some students as well um, about their um, perspective on NCI. Hi everybody, thanks again for joining us today. Um, as Karen said, my name is Frances Sheridan. I am the Programme Director of the Higher Certificate in Computing in the School of Computing at NCI and a first and second year of the BSc in Computing. Um, and I'm here joined today by some of the students from our courses. So we have Jack from the BSc in Technology Management and we have Shane. So I'm just going to pass you over to the guys to introduce themselves. Um, Jack, maybe you go first. Yeah, no problem. My name is Jack Langella. I'm a second year Technology Management student. And Shane. How's it going guys? My name is Shane and I am in my third year of my Bachelor's of Science in Computing at NCI. Thanks guys and welcome and thank you so much for joining us today to both of you as well. It's really important that these events that students can get, prospective students can get a feel for what the courses are really like and the best place for that to come is from, from people like you on the course. Um, so I suppose I have a few questions for you that I'm hoping you, you'll answer first today. And um, the first is, is the course that you've signed up for what you expected it to be when you applied? And Jack, maybe we'll start with you on this one. Um, yeah, I should say I kind of got the idea I wanted to do business and IT. And then I kind of done a bit of research. I done a PLC last year in logistics, so it's kind of a bit different to what I originally maybe thought my career would kind of go down the path of and then I just really find the business part of the list interesting. I'm good at computers and then I've just done in-depth research and found technology management and it's a mix of both which is you get the best of both worlds basically. You get a business degree and a somewhat computer science degree in one so it is what I expected but yeah it is kind of what I expected. It is a bit tough but I mean what else? would you expect from a computer science degree? Very good, thank you. Um, and how about you, Shane? Uh, yeah, no, look, it is and it isn't what I was expecting in in the best of ways, you know. Um, before I had done this course, I thought that computing would be very heavily maths based, which I was kind of frightened of because I wasn't I wasn't the best maths student in, in secondary school, you know. But um, now having been in it, it's a uh, you know, like if you're thinking, oh, you know, if you're interested in computers or you want to learn programming, you're kind of thinking, oh, no, it's 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 heavily match based. It isn't really at all. Um, so that kind of put my nerves. It is. Uh, I think some of the misconceptions as well is that, you know, there's there, you know, people might think that you get thrown at the college and, you know, you're on your own and stuff. It's not like that at all. Um, that really surprised me. The, the amount of support that we have in 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 my course that I've had over the last two years has been great, and um, not just from the support lectures. The support lectures have been unbelievable over the last two years. Um, getting the help that we you, you will need at some point throughout your course, you know, and then just the normal the re the regular lectures in general have been just great. If you ever need help, they're there. They're there to answer uh, any of your any of your questions. So, yeah, it's so far it's it's um. It's, ex it's exceeded my expectations, you know. Um, I was expecting to go straight into programming within my first year, and that's exactly what happens. Um, in my second semester of first year, I was learning Java straight away, and that's that's exactly what someone who wants to uh, who wants to learn about computing wants, you know. So yeah, it's been it's been great so far. 
Thanks, Shane. That's great. And I think there's probably more than one or two students breathing a sigh of relief when you tell them that, you know, that connection that we all assume is there between maths and computing, you know, um, isn't necessarily the case, you know, and I can see Jack is nodding here as well, but me too. Like, I think there can, I think there is a connection between maths and computing. There's no doubt about it. But I think people assume that means that if you don't feel really confident with maths that you won't be good at computing and that's not the case at all. And I'm always telling students that, you know, and it's great to hear that that's actually what you find as you move through the course, you know. Um, and then I suppose just to, to explain to anybody who's here listening, you know, um, when Shane speaks about the support lecturers versus the regular lecturers, you know, we do have a number of dedicated support services at NCI, which you've probably heard about watching other talks today, but and um, we have a dedicated computing support office that's there to help any student that feels like they're struggling a little bit just with part of a module with a whole module you know sometimes they put on extra classes for for an entire group of students you know and they're there the entire way through your program to give a little bit of a dig out whenever you think you need it so it's great that you know you guys are finding that those services are there and they're they're helpful you know um as you go along you know and it's great to see that you think the courses are what you kind of had hoped had hoped they were going to be too, you know. And um, what would you say then? And we'll start with you first this time, Shane, so as not to be picking on Jack first all the time. What would you say is the most interesting thing about your studies so far? Um, there's there, there's a lot uh, to find interesting about computing. To be fair, um, I wouldn't have went into software if I if I didn't think so. But I think um, with my course in particular, the sheer amount of technologies that you actually learn. Like I'm only in my fourth semester of third year, so I still have a long way to go. But already, I've I've learned so much about Java. You know, um, from my second semester and first year, we're learning Java. Uh, Francis yourself has taught me Java um, in oriented object pro programming in second year. So um you learn so much about that then you've got javascript which you'll learn about in for which i learned about in first year in web design um you'll learn about um uh, database technology such as uh, sql and what i find most interesting is how you come all of these technologies can be combined together to create something really great um which then you can showcase in in second year term project which which we did you know um and there's so many, there's so many modules that we've done to get to show off these technologies in web application development, where we got to create our own website that has functionality using JavaScript. So it's just for me, that's what I find most interesting is all of all of the technologies and how they're used together to create something really great. Excellent. Thanks, Shane. Um, and now over to you, Jack. Oh, sorry, I wasn't used. Um, yeah, I think the most interesting thing, I'm only in my second year, so I've only kind of kicked off some of it different now. So I think for me personally, the most interesting is how I can adapt to, as Shane was talking about, you're doing all these programming, but then also I have, and I'll be honest about it for business, it is mostly is theory based, where computing wouldn't be as theory based. So I'm kind of impressed on myself that I can jump from actually doing IT and then programming and then actually going to the next module and it's theory and it is nice to kind of have that bit of relaxation because programming sometimes can be a bit challenging it's stressful but once you get it done you are it is so good to see your program actually up and running but then when you're in the business side it's just kind of you really just kind of do need to focus on certain things like it's key points you need to focus on so I think that's really interesting that we get like a blended learning as we have been, but like not in that term. We've been blended learning as in we're getting two into one. So it's nice that we get that mix of mix of sectors, I think is the best way to say it. It's interesting to see how if you want to be a lecturer in NCI doing computing or if you want to be in a business somewhere doing administration or accounting, it's nice to see that, OK, these are the two things that I might be able to do in life. So I think I might have a bit of a problem for here when I want to decide what I want to do because I feel like I have a, a lot of opportunities now. Excellent, thanks Jack. And I think you both have brought up quite a few really interesting points there. You know, I think um, I think you're right, Jack, the blend on that BSD and technology management of the business and computing really brings two worlds together and it puts you in a position where someday, you know, you may well go down the business route, but you could find yourself managing a team of 
IT people, you know, and it's really important to be able to understand their speak and to be able to get in and throw yourself in on the projects they're working on. And I think that's what one of the real key points of your program, you know, is that you can go kind of one direction or the other, but you'll always fully understand the other world as well, you know, and more and more now as times change and things move on, we're just finding there is no real difference between the business world and the computing world. They have to go hand in hand, you know, so that's really, really important. And um, I, I think everybody listening is probably thinking, hang on, these guys are talking about a lot of the same modules, but they're doing two different courses. So it's important to point out, you know, the first year of your programs, the entire first semester is shared. All the modules are the same. You do the same maths module, you do the same introductory programming module, and there's quite a bit common. And it's only really in semester two of first year that you start to branch out a little bit in different directions. You still have some common modules. And now, Jack, that you're in second year, you're probably finding there's a little bit less overlap with the other course. Um, and Shane would have noticed that too last year, you know. Um, but so that's important, I suppose, just for everybody listening at home, trying to get a feel for the programs to see that there is a lot of overlap. And that's how we can do a combined computing and business program, you know, that you're in there. You're not just doing computing for, for business students, you know, but you're in there in the thick of it, doing the real hardcore computing modules that the other computing students are doing. And um, the other thing that popped into my head was Shane mentioned the team project, you know, that we do in second year. And again, Jack, Jack, your program does that too. And that's one of the other shared modules that's really important because when you go into third year and you start looking for your third year work placement, your internship, that's the piece of work that you get to take out there to the workplace and show employers when you're interviewing for jobs, you're going to use this second year module and you're going to sort of help sell yourself with this piece of work. And that brings me to my other point I should have mentioned earlier, we were to be joined by a third student this morning or this today, but she, she couldn't make it unfortunately because she's at a job interview for her third year internship. So obviously these things take priority. We wouldn't we wouldn't be asking anyone to pass up a job now, but um, so otherwise she would have been with us today. OK, I think we're ready for our next question then. So um, Jack, where do you hope your qualification that you get from this course will lead you? Oh, um, <laughs> it's a bit of a hard one to be honest because uh, there's so much more that we still have to do. Like this example, next semester we're doing accounting. I've never done accounting before and I might fall in love with it. So it's really, I hope that I just get a job that I enjoy. I don't think anyone should focus on how much money you'll be earning in a job. I think it's more the focus of, it's great you can make them 200 grand maybe a year in some job, but you absolutely hate it. Or would you rather do a job that you're on 40 grand a year, say, and you love it. You love going to work every day. I think that's the goal in my head is to, it's obviously it's nice to have a nice paying job, obviously, but we have to like it to actually want to be there. And you're doing a degree for four years, you want to do a master's, it's five. So if you want to do that, it's it's four or five years of your life that you're kind of setting yourself up for and you want to make sure that the end goal is that you're happy and not in a job that you're miserable. <laughs> that's the best way to say it. Like you just want to make sure that you kind of put yourself first and you're happy about what you end up doing after and again just focus on your studies and just do as well as you can if you have a certain goal just keep trying to reach that goal every year that's really all i can say that's brilliant jack thank you and i think you know i think it's it's a it's a great way to approach that whole space you know and um, is that it's completely okay to follow your heart and to study something you're interested in simply because you're interested in studying it you know and that the job will fall out of it and trust that there will be something at the end of it that you enjoy doing you know and that that's what you're looking for so that's fantastic and obviously you know it goes without saying um, NCI, as, as well as having a computing support service and a math support service, we have a career support as well, you know, so they do assist students in pursuing those internships that we talked about, you know, and securing those interviews and then in preparing for the big bad world afterwards and figuring out what that role is that you want to pursue when you've finished, you know. So um, all of these supports are there and obviously you're only into your second year now, Jack, and you'll encounter these as you, as you go along, you know. And I'm sure Shane is probably already in touch with our, our career service at the minute and um, gearing up for his third year placement in semester two. So how about that, you then, Shane, the same question to you. Where do you hope this will lead or what's your plan for your internship even? Well, yeah, as you mentioned about the, the, the work placement internship um, in, in, in third year, it's coming up for us uh, in my next semester. Um, we I've, I've been lucky enough and very grateful to have been accepted in 
to work day as a software application developer intern. Um, I'm I'm over the moon with that because that's actually when I when I heard about you know that my that my course um requires a work placement in third year. I was like I want work day. I've heard about work day, so really really happy with that. So um yeah to answer your question, uh, I'd love a full time job in workday maybe if they if they like me on my internship hopefully i'll be kept on who knows um but to be honest just any any software development job that's why that's why i kind of um that's why i chose this course it's what i want to do i want i want to program for a living uh so i would take i would take any any good software development job from any of the the the, the millions of companies in dublin now that, that um that have set up shop here you know um but yeah, uh, so work day, work day would be great. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Brilliant. And um, congratulations. That's fantastic. You know, it's great at this early stage to know that you've got your semester two internship all lined up and you're ready to go. You know, it's fantastic. And I'm sure you worked alongside the careers office to, to secure that. I know that they send out regular bulletins of jobs that are available and places that are looking to secure students, you know. Um, so really well done, fantastic. Um, and, and so given that, okay, so you want to head to software development chain, you know, and you were great, like I was going to say, you know, for the people at home, what's involved in working at Workday, but you know, you're working on um, software development as a program and putting all those programming skills into action, you know, and Jack, I know you're going to follow your heart, I suppose, depending on how, how the course goes. But did you have a different plan coming in? Was that always where you started out? You know, did you have something in mind? Like Jack, you had said, you know, initially you'd studied logistics. So did you sort of have something else in mind? <laughs> um, yeah, well, basically I got, so I, well, I was joined last year. So I got two offers. So I got one from another college and I got one from NCI. And I was kind of torn between the both of them because one of them was kind of logistics around and then the other one I just technology management I was just more I didn't know if someone was pulling me towards it to be like I don't know I just feel like I'm good at computers it'd be nice to get into like the business world so yeah I think from where I was in sixth year from younger I wanted to be a pilot so it just it's it just completely different things that you go through when you're in school so when it comes to your CAO I think just it's not the end of the world like there's always something like example I don't know PLC I put my CEO, I got my first place. If you don't get your first place, who cares? You can do something else. I don't know PLC, got into it. And then I just think I knew from there, I was like, don't think this is what I want to do. So it definitely was a nice way to kind of get a feel, I guess, for being outside of school. And as Shane said, you're not really thrown into just college. You're not a number, I feel like an NCI, you actually are a person. Like Francis, I had Francis last year for two modules. So it was kind of like, you see the same faces around which is nice so again it's just nice to know that if you did have a bit of confusion about this you can go and approach them that's the best thing to say perfect thanks jack and shane was programming always your your intention from the outset that was your plan from day one was it uh yeah actually um so I, I actually started college at 23 so i was a bit of a late bloomer um I, I actually applied for for the course in straight after uh, my leaving cert unfortunately I didn't have enough points at the time but they applied again a few years later and i got it so um i think you know after school a journey skill like I, I was a big gamer i loved playing games so i was like what's what's a way what's a way to get into that kind of you know that work environment of game development and stuff with like computing is, is, is the best way um but having spent two years in my course, you know, it's uh, it's not just now game development that I'm interested in, but just any software development. I think when you're actually using these technologies and you're actually programming, you actually realize how uh, how interesting it is and how much there is to love about it outside of just game development. So my interest in software development has changed, but it's always um, it's always been an interest and it's always something that I wanted I wanted to pursue even even when I was in school. So yeah, pretty much. Excellent. This is brilliant. Thanks a million, guys. That was fantastic. And I think you've given people a real insight into what it's like to study at NCI and into how thing, your mind might change and how your thoughts evolve um, and how you're finding your way through the course. So again, really, really great to hear all of this. Thanks again for joining us today. Don't forget, if anybody has any questions, I'm here to answer them um, about anything that came up today and chat to the lads.
And thanks again. So we're going to find out some more about our business courses in NCI. So I'm going to pass on to Dave uh, to chat some more. Hello, and I'm delighted today to be uh, joined by Brenda Mehra, who is a graduate of marketing at NCI and currently a student uh, on her doing her master's at NCI. So it's great to have you. It's great. My pleasure to meet you again, Brenda. We haven't seen one another for, for a while. Um, just as our, we're, we're talking now about marketing, we would like to have had some people in about our human resources degree, but unfortunately they're all tied up at the moment doing group assignments. And as you know, assignments are a hugely important part of your university course, and uh, we, we don't want to disturb them of that. So maybe sometime in the future we will have a HR person in. But now it's over to Brenda. Just tell us a little bit about yourself to start, Brenda. Hi everyone, I'm Brenda. Um, I did my undergrad at NCI. I did BA Honours in Marketing Practice. So I started in 2018 and I did three years and I decided to progress for um, master's level in marketing as well as I love marketing. I'll be sharing all about it with you <laughs> and I'm very excited to be here today and I wish you enjoy and hear my experience and that's it. That's for me. Thank you, Dave. Lovely, Brenda. And uh, yes, you certainly did uh, take the, the BA marketing practice and uh, you were very successful, if you don't mind me telling you, tell, telling people about that. But tell me a little bit about before you took on the course, what were your expectations? So I think as any person, um, so I'm from Brazil, everyone, and I'm I living um, secondary. I wasn't sure what I wanted and kind of the huge challenge you're like, is that the right thing for my career? Is Am I choosing the right thing? Is, is that for me? And I think that you, you know one thing you'd like and I said I'm a very creative person and I was like what are the universities out there I don't like very theory I'm so sorry I, I like the experience and being able to participate in the college life itself so I was like NCI is great for that so when I arrived on even though it's a marketing course it's called marketing in practice so we have theory and we apply those in tutorials so it's a great opportunity if you're thinking oh my god I'm going to go to university and oh this is going to be on the theory and it's not um Dave you know yourself we had a very practical course so as you guys can see behind me um I did a capstone project and we had to do loads of projects so my project was this nice um, cocktail shaker, don't worry, it's non-alcoholic. And this one is a cocktail shaker. And all of that was bringing it from China and getting experience with my team and working in the branding and in the marketing. It was a huge experience. Like I wasn't sure what I wanted at the beginning, but I'm sure that NCI made the best of that experience to happen of the college life with student union, student support. I think you're just not sure what you want, but you are confident when you have a good institution to support you there. OK, and that's very good. You mentioned uh, marketing practice and that's 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 a huge important. It is a BA in marketing practice. And you also mentioned Siptail, the business that you set up and you really did set that up, didn't you, your team? Yes, yeah, so we did set up this business. Um, I have them here. <laughs> I will be showing you guys. I think you guys can see. So our business was uh, the idea in our final year, we bring everything we learn from theory and practice from first years and second year to one module for a full year where we learn more about like in practice how this really is going to work. So we set up a business. Our idea was to create um, easy, simple cocktails. And we said, you know what? We, we are young. We love, we love to have fun. And it was really in the between of COVID. <laughs> and we were like, you know, a lot of people are having fun at home. So what can we do to bring this fun, um, like in, make it even more fun. So we said, why not make a cocktail shaker? And we did some research and we realized that there are people that are not drinking as much as like nowadays you can see like Heineken Zero, Guinness Zero. So we decided then to do a non-alcoholic mixture. So it's great because we could apply the theory that we had of like how to do research in practice and it was great and we really loved it. So this, the shaker that we got actually we had to 
bring it from China. So one of our teammates um, had contact with a Chinese producer from Alibaba and she got to put our branding in the shaker and how like to outsource, especially Dave, you, he taught us logistics distribution. So it's kind of to understand how you bring from another country into Ireland and how you market. So one of our differentials was that everything's about the brand and making sure that your product's out there. So we had like this little, um, I think I can show you guys. Yeah, so it's like a Shopify um, link. So if a person is Kansas, they are bring they are brought into like a playlist where they can listen to music and sip into their cocktails that is like mocktails basically i know i'm saying cocktails but are mocktails and it was a great experience and you're not sure if you're going to have enough support but i'm i'm telling you nci is great for that there are student supports and student services counseling services you have the student union that is there to support you as well and uh, as a full time student, you're like, oh my God, if I'm going to have time to do all what I want, then you have a gym facility just beside us. Um, Karen can tell more about it if you guys want to know more. Um, but NCI is great to help you. Lectures are there to support you. All you need to do is reach out and you won't regret. <laughs> and I think Brenda, as well as that, were you a class rep as well? For your for your group, can you tell us a little bit about that? About what what is involved in being a class rep? Yeah, so being a class rep is all about engaging with college and lecturers and building your network. Um, so when you are starting, like you probably don't have never worked part time before or anything like that, and being in college is an opportunity to build your new relationships that you have it for life, you know. And I was a class rep for two years and now that I'm my master's in marketing as well, I, I am a class rep, is a great opportunity. You are in contact with your lecturers, um, you're in contact with the college and you're really knowing how grown up life is, you know, like you are in contact with what um, you thought, oh, I would never be able to. And some people are very shy, to be honest. I was when I arrived because it's like I'm from a, a different country abroad. I is my English OK? I was not sure, but you have to try. You have to 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 make yourself out there and be sure that you make the most out of your experience. You know, you're the only one that is crafting your path. So I recommend that go for it and you have the great time of your life. I, I did. I don't regret my experience it was one of the best experience. When we finished our presentation the last day, I remember Dermot and um, he's not here today, but he's a great part of this project, Dave and Dermot. And they were like, oh my God, 10 minutes and two seconds. That was my overall experience. Like my three years resumed in 10 minutes. It was so much work and so much effort and so much um, care that me and my team have put into that and of course the lecturers are brilliant they are fantastic and you you just have like the best experience ever <laughs> and obviously you did have a great experience at NCI and a great experience in college Brenda were there any challenges along the way for you I think challenge there are uh, any anywhere you go um I was telling you guys before my huge like being doing an assignment as first time. I remember I was brand management. I was like, oh my God, I never done an assignment before. So I, I wasn't sure, but thankfully um, the library have a very strong support service, Keith from the library. I had a booked an appointment with him and I was like, you know, this is my first time doing this. How can I do it? And he went for a full hour, touch base with me. This is how you research. This is how you write. And I was like, oh my God, I I didn't think that I would have this amount of support. That like the biggest challenge is like, oh, so many new things that I I wasn't used to, but I will I was there to be supported by the college throughout my journey. So I know this is the assignment, um, but as well like socializing. Thankfully, the student union um does like um freshers week. 
so I had the opportunity to meet my other um, teammates, um, classmates and other people from other courses, you know, and have a great time because that's all about your college experience, you know, that you're having a good time, that you're building your relationships and when you finish you you have your career in but the experience that you're having, that's the most important thing, I think. And now you've progressed, you've, you're going to graduate in November, is that right, for your marketing practice? Yeah, we're looking forward yeah. to this. And you progressed on to master's. Would you say the BA marketing practice was a good foundation for a master's degree? A hundred percent. Like I, I, I do not, I, I don't know how I would be able to do a master's if I didn't have the foundation of the BA um, in marketing practice. It's, it's such amount of good foundation. Like our first, I remember our first module is um, mar uh, fundamentals of marketing. So you start with level. You're basing yourself. I know some people, if you're not experienced in marketing, you have never before heard of it before it's fine so the lectures are very good in the sense that they're building you into like a high level don't worry you're starting with basic and you grow up and develop so now that i'm doing masters it's more into specialize yourself and make sure um you are building and specializing what you like so i know nci as well offer loads of postgraduates um degrees um sorry um masters so you can do business um you can do management you you can specialize in the area that you like more and i think that's the the biggest thing that you, the best thing that you can do you choose what you like start with the foundation start fresh and then you move on to what you really like so i like marketing and decide to specialize in marketing but i could have done international business or management or could have progressed to other um sides of things and I am very happy with the foundation that I have received through my three years. Okay. And just your passion for marketing is so evident and you, you as you say, you found uh, your, your niche in marketing. So Brenda, Mayra, now when you finish your master's, where is this going to take you? Oh, um, I definitely want to be, I love brand and brand management. So I will be looking forward to get brand, um, a graduate position into brand and brand management and like portfolios and see what other brands are doing and make sure to, to be the face of the brand. And I will be looking forward to my career. That That's what I'm here for. You know, I, even though it was fun and exciting, my end goal was to have a good career. And that's exactly what is happening, you know. Um, so that's it. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm very excited for it. And I hope to, to achieve my end goal was okay. that's it. <laughs> it has been lovely talking to you. But just one last question. Are we going to retain you in Ireland or are you going to go home to Brazil when you finish? Oh, I don't know. Actually, yes, I was thinking that um, I hope to stay here at least two more years um, to build my career. But I don't know, Brazil, it's such a, a great place to be and I miss home so much. Like my family, I have been living here for five years, so um, I just miss my family so much. And but the opportunities that you have in Ireland, I don't know if I would have back home. So. I think, I don't know, <laughs> I hope to stay here for a long time, but Ireland needs to like and want me as well. Like, <laughs> um, But I hope 100% uh, to stay here for a while um, and maybe go back in the future to support my family, like my mom, my sister and my dad as well. So that's what I hope. Very good. Listen, thanks very much, Brenda. And I think no matter where you go, there's a brand out there waiting for Brenda's touch. <laughs> uh, we will hear from you in the future. Thank you very much. That was, it was lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me here. So next up is Argyr from the School of Computing. So he's going to be chatting to some students who are currently studying in NCI and uh, find out more about data science. Thank you, Karen. I'm uh, Argyr uh, Nikolai Moldovan and I'm a program director for the BSc in Data Science. Uh, where I teach uh, a few important modules there, the introduction to data science, the statistics too, and uh, data mining and machine learning. So uh, thank you, Niamh and Christopher for uh, for joining us. Uh, my, fir my first question, and we'll start with Niamh, um, is the course what you had expected to be when you applied? 
Hi, uh, my name is Neve Daly. Daly. I'm a third year student on the data science course. Um, when I initially applied, I used the open day in NCI and the prospectus to have a look at the different modules. So I knew kind of what I was getting into. Um, looking at it, I expected a lot of maths because I saw a lot of the modules are maths related. But what I didn't expect was uh, the amount of English as well that you'd be expected to do in the form of report writing. Um, you kind of use the report writing to tell the story of all the data analysis you do during the course. And that's actually turned out to be one of my favourite things about the course, when you're able to tell a story and to tell other people what you've done and why you've done it. Thanks. Uh, you touched on a very, very important and uh, useful skill, and that is the storytelling, which is crucial for data science students, uh, because it's, it's important not only to learn the technical and uh, the practical aspects of the courses and the theoretical knowledge, but it's also crucial to be able to translate your work, your practical work into, into something that it's uh, easy to understand for non-technical people and business people, because that's what data analytics and data science is. Christopher, what, what's your opinion on this? Uh, hi, my name is Christopher Ware and I'm studying uh, data science in third year. Uh, well, like Argy was saying about the uh, talking about your employers and to non-technical staff in your potential company in the future, it's all well and good to be able to take a data set and work on a data set and analyze it, which is obviously a huge, huge part of what we do in this course. But as you said, it is so important and so interesting to take that data and basically have to write a full report about this data, about what it means, about where you source your data from, what are potential, uh, how your hypothesis comes into this data, what the results are, and basically try to relay that information from your skill sets about what the results mean to people that may not have that fluency in data science or in computing terms. And really, I really love telling the story of my data because it makes it more meaningful to me, and I'm sure Neve will agree. Um, that when you work with data, it's not just about the numbers and the maths, it's about what those number, what the numbers and the maths means and what results, especially for companies, what that, what that data can give that company in terms of cutting edge over other companies who are in similar situations who have their own data teams. And it's all about trying to innovate and improve and really kind of progress on data and especially when writing reports, it's important to note that good comprehensive English is very much needed to be able to help uh, your different employers, your colleagues to really help understand your data and so that they can understand where you come from as long as much as you understand yourself as well. Thank you. Um, I'm curious how your perspective changed since uh, over the past three or two and a half years. Um, and why is that? Because uh, a lot of the a lot of the Living Cert students uh, and CEO students in particular, uh, perhaps they have difficulties to understand the, the benefits and the importance of uh, data science in today's economy. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, how did your perspective change over the, over the years? Uh, and what do you think about the ethical implications of, uh, of the data science and the fact that more and more companies they collect the data, our data, personal data, they make use of that data. And uh, what would you advise uh, your fellow students? Um, well, personally, of, as we're writing these massive reports or writing, uh, we always have to source our data ethically. So you have to get consent from, if you're using personal data from certain like other colleagues, we always have to get their written consent after these forms. Because as you see with such as Facebook and WhatsApp, there's a lot of data breaches, which now in the EU, with all these GDPR rules, it's absolutely massive about getting consensual data, about in the full terms and agreements and all the rest, about knowing the use of privacy and the user's rights. And really, from my perspective, when I first came into this college in first year, I was very thinking, like I wasn't great at maths in school in the Leaving Cert. I, my maths grade was below average, but you really, 
the maths it picks up so quickly now uh, through college and really keep it through the maths. Um, sorry, <laughs> it's just uh, from the mathematical perspective, uh, really improves from the statistics to even data mining machine learning. You learn so many new skills through coding, uh, through statistical analysis, and it really, data isn't just about the numbers. There's so much more to data, and especially now in such a technological age, it is probably one of the fastest growing industries in the world, really. It's really one of the most leading industries now. Most companies, I think over 70% of Forbes list companies are moving towards big data and moving towards these data teams. And really, so my perspective of it is that data is just more than numbers. It's that isn't everything, absolutely everything from all new technologies, from the way our brains are wired, from absolutely like everything in the new age world, like data is huge and it's always going to be striving and it's always going to be progressing. And it's really something that I think a lot of students should be getting into early because the potential there to grow is absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. So Niamh, how, how did your perspective change? Yeah, just touching on what Chris said, I think a lot of um, data science, what surprised me was that you're not limited to one industry when you study data science. Data is used in every industry nowadays, so you could get a career in health or like we saw with probably the COVID figures, everyone was probably tuning in to watch that nearly every day, seeing the different stats for that. Data isn't really stuck in, in one area. You can kind of go to anything. Like I know personally, I, I would love to have a career in Formula One and I know data is, that's such a data driven sport and I know that a career or learning data science would be able to get me to that um, my career progression that I would love to do. Thank you very much, uh, Niamh and Christopher. That was very insightful. Oh, um, so yeah, that's brilliant. Thanks so much uh, for coming on and letting us know about data science. We could listen to it all day, but um, we have a couple of more subjects to cover. So thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. So next up is Fergal and Sinead, and they're going to be chatting about studying psychology at NCI. Hi, I'm Dr. Fergal O'Brien. I'm one of the lecturers here on the psychology team at NCI. Um, I lecture in research methods and in cyber psychology, and my own research interests are in risk taking among young people. And uh, Sinead, it's really good to chat to you today about uh, your time at NCI. Um, it's great to talk to a third year student about where things are at for them now. And I wanted to ask from your perspective as a third year student, is the course what you had expected it to be when you had originally applied? My name is Sinead Woods and I am a third year student in the full time psychology course and I definitely think that the college course actually exceeded my expectations. The variety in the different modules was something that really, really surprised me. We learned from um, research methods to developmental to biological basis of behaviour, cyber psychology and much more and it's such a wide variety of different things. Uh, I was very nervous coming into the course because I never actually did science in secondary school and I was worried that that would hold me back in comparison to my peers in my year. But the support I received from lecturers and from the learning and teaching supports within the college was exceptional and I've really made friends and I just love the course so much. I definitely think that it is such a varied and interesting course to study. So would you say your perspective of psychology and psychological science is different now from before you when you applied? I definitely think so. I wasn't expecting it to um, change how I view things so much and to um, change how I read things and even watching TV now. It's, uh, it's I'm sitting there like, oh, that's so interesting. That person chose to do that. Like I, it makes me um, analyze things in a different way due to the theories that we've learned in class, the different modules and even assignments and, um, you know, figuring out how to make topics that maybe were discovered years and years ago relevant and how they affect us now. And just the constant body of work that's coming out all the time 
from different research. It's it's just fascinating um, to read, to be honest, and to study. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of things about the course that you enjoy, but I'm wondering, is there something you could focus on as what you think is maybe the most interesting thing that you've learned about during your studies? Um, I think for me, the most interesting thing I learned about the course is when we learn different um, interventions that we can actually utilise ourselves as students during our studies. So when we were in second year, we did a module called Coaching Psychology, and during it, we could do things like journaling and um, we learned about how to do goals and how to set goals for ourselves that were achievable. And we learned about multiple different theories behind models. And then this year now in final year, um, we are doing an assignment all about stress intervention, which is obviously a really, really important aspect to learn about as a student, to learn how to manage stress and also to um, make the time to, you know, be a student, have friends, work and also achieve our student goals. So it sounds like the, the practical applied aspects of it are things that really have uh, have gelled for you. I'm wondering now, uh, where do you hope that the qualification is going to lead you after your time at NCI? So um, for my academic career, I've actually had quite a varied one. So when I left school at 17, I did um, a PLC in Theatre Studies Performance and I got my qualifications there in a QQI level six. And then I came to NCI and did um, psychology. So I'm finally year now at the moment. And my end goal would be to be a drama therapist for children with additional and special needs. So I've been looking at different masters in developmental psychology, child psychology, and also in drama therapy. I would love to work with children and to help their, them and their families to um, achieve a fulfilled life. And I also love looking at courses to do with school psychology and just adolescents and children in general. That, that, that's very interesting. I, I think, Karen, sir, did you want to to ask something there about um, about um, Sinead's involvement with learning and teaching support? Yeah, I was just wondering um, how you found the experience at NCI and the supports that we have in the learning and teaching for our students. Yeah, so um, as a student with dyslexia, um, I was kind of nervous coming into the course about um, the amount of reading and things that I'd have to do. But with learning and teaching supports, they helped me with different tools. So um, they've sent me different programs to do with, um, you know, online reading. So then my laptop reads my books out to me and I get extra help with things like during exams. I get a room and um, that only has a couple of people in it rather than my whole class. I have someone that can read to me, but I also have the computer read to me during exams. I get extra time and things like that. But the variety of different supports they have for students with learning disabilities and additional needs and even students without is just phenomenal. The library supports that are there, they do classes in, you know, um, essay writing and referencing and things like that. So if you have any questions or queries at all, there's always someone that can help you and answer your questions, which I think is phenomenal. And as well, um, I'm just wondering as well, Sinead, like uh, from your background before you started NCI, I suppose, have you got involved in clubs and societies uh, in the college? Um, yes, I actually have. So when I came into my first year, I joined the Dance Society and I've been in there ever since. So this is my third year on the committee and um, it's my second year as president. So I essentially um, run the whole society and make sure my committee are working as a team, which has been really, really good um, for team management and things like that, especially when I then revert back to my studies and have to do group projects and stuff. It's really, really helpful to learn to work as a team. And um, for clubs and societies, there's such a wide variety, like just because you're going to do your studies doesn't mean you have to leave your hobbies and other interests at the door. There are so many other options of how you can still fulfill that. So there's sports, there's creative ones. And um, this year we have a feminist society and a fashion society, photography, anything you can think of, we probably have a society for. And if there isn't, then you can just start one. Like everyone is very supportive and um, in the student services and in the students union as well. So um, you'll always have people fighting your corner for you. That's really interesting to hear about how involved you have gotten in the college life opportunities that are around. How do you find balancing those opportunities with your studies at NCI? 
Yeah, so that is definitely something that um, takes time and practice. And um, I do find that because of um, the way the course is laid out, our lectures are very good at telling us towards the start of the semester, look, you've got an assignment due on this week and this is going to happen here, you have a group assignment. Like within the college course, there's such a variety of different assignments. So if you personally um, are wary about group projects, there's personal essays, there's lots of different things. So your grade never just relies on one aspect. There's loads of different things that you can do. Um, so definitely time management skills, which you do learn about in your course, um, and also trying to find that balance of how much time you can allocate to different things. And um, I do find it is good to time take out your week and all of that type of thing. But um, yeah, definitely knowing in advance about the assignment dates and keeping on top of them is really, really helpful. And Sinead, I'm wondering, do you have any piece of advice for anybody who is thinking of coming to study psychology at NCI that we haven't covered? Um, so my piece of advice would be, um, you know, don't be afraid to look into psychology before you even come. If it's something that you're interested in, watch YouTube videos about it, watch some documentaries, you know, read a book or two that has been written by a well-known psychologist. You know, don't be afraid to ask people questions. If you know someone who's studying psychology, especially in NCI, like do not be afraid to message them. We are all very welcoming. And um, luckily with psychology, we actually have um, quite small years in comparison to some other courses and things. So um, you do really get to know your year group and you get to know who's who's in your year and you get to know the lectures really well. And all of the lectures are super friendly too. So don't be afraid to, you know, email the college, look at our Instagram accounts and things like that. The NCI IRL Instagram account is really, really helpful. Um, look on YouTube, look on the college website. There's so much advice anywhere that you can think of. Sinead, it's been really great talking to you today about psychology at NCI and thanks so much for your enthusiastic answers. Thank you, Fergal. See you in the classroom. See you soon. Thank you very much for attending our open day today. I hope that it's given you some insight all of the courses in NCI. And if you do have any follow-up questions, you can always contact me directly. And um, my name is Karen Campbell. So you'll get us at karen.campbell at ncirl.ie or you can contact us through our social media channels. And um, so yeah, I hope that you have found some insight into all of our programs and I hope that um, you will choose NCI for your CEO.